This afternoon we're the guest of Alan Reid at the Capital Club Library, uh, a very pleasant uh, place and I thank you Alan for uh, this opportunity. Alan is the co-managing director of Intercedent, which is an investment advisory company uh, based here in Beijing. Now Alan, you've been here a long time I think in Beijing and in China. We'd like just to uh, tell us a little bit about how things have changed over that time in terms of you know, business opportunities for you know, companies coming in from outside. Thank you very much. Um, thanks for the opportunity to talk with you today. Um, yes, I have been in China for a long time. Um, in fact, I arrived here in 1985, and apart from two years in Hong Kong, I've been working in China and living here for, for, for the balance of uh, that period. So it, I think it's something like 27 years now. So in that period of time, as you can appreciate, there's been massive changes. Um, and uh, the acceleration in the uh, Chinese economy of that period of time has led to a massive amount of new wealth here on the ground in China. And I thought one of the things I might address this afternoon is the issue of uh, the Chinese uh, interest in investing abroad, particularly um, in developed uh, nations like Australia, where um, they can put their money to good use. The um, situation here a few years ago was that uh, there was a pretty big restriction on Chinese investing abroad. Um, those companies that were allowed to invest abroad were particularly in the sort of state-owned area. And indeed, we have seen some very substantial investments in Australia. Um, particularly in the um, mineral resources area from China. Um, but the key thing, I think, is that the uh, uh, sort of uh, permission to uh, invest abroad now, this sort of issue has changed a lot now in China. Uh, if we separate the economy into state-owned companies, private companies and individuals, um, there is now across-the-board support for the notion that Chinese can invest abroad. And this is a very, very big change. Um, in, in, in things here in China. So um, what we're seeing now is we're seeing in the state-owned sector, um, those companies previously just looking mainly at sort of mineral resources uh, issues in Australia where they can put money into mining operations and then get an off-take agreement to bring um, iron ore or coal or copper back to, uh, for example, back to China. But now what we're seeing with uh, these big state-owned companies, and there's probably about 120 of them in China, very, very significant large companies. They're now looking at um, new areas. They're looking at education. They're looking at technology. They're looking particularly in Australia at agriculture. They're looking at healthcare. So um, on top of that, our private business community up here, which is over half the economy now, that was, you know, when I arrived in 85, the private sector was pretty tiny, but it's now more than half of the economy. So you've got a huge number of uh, private companies out there. Those companies as well are being asked to go abroad um, and make money in the international community. Um, Australia's done it pretty well. They've had a lot of people from China go down to Australia, whether it's for study or for business or for tourism purposes. and So a lot of people are interested in Australia and want to have a look at investing in that country. Then on the level below that, you've got individuals. Now, um, obviously there's uh, quite a community of uh, high net worth wealth, uh, high net worth uh, Chinese individuals now here in this economy. And um, those people are now being actively supported by their government here in China to go abroad and. Um, and even migrate. So the Australian government has a number of migration um, channels for these type of people. Most significantly there's uh, the Significant Investor Scheme which was introduced last November which is, is a sort of a fairly um, uh, new and unique type of uh, channel for people to invest up to five million dollars in Australian companies and, and, and get uh, Get, get migration through that investment. So um, you're seeing, you know, on all levels, state-owned, private and individual, you're seeing a huge interest in, in investing in Australia, not only in resources, but now in agriculture and some of the other areas I mentioned. So it's a pretty good opportunity. And, you know, if, you, if you're talking to, uh, as I often do, to uh, Australian companies um, that haven't been into China before, they are um, a little late. Um, in some sectors, it's going to be pretty tough for them to get in. Uh, the business operating environment here is competitive. It's a global market. 
and it's no holds barred. So, you know, coming in unsupported can be pretty tough. It can take a lot of time. It can cost a lot of money. So what we're saying is maybe the opportunity is actually in first attracting some Chinese expertise or capital into your business in Australia. And then establishing you know, a really good partnership or joint venture relationship or share, you know, co-shareholding relationship with, with a Chinese um, business or individual. And then you know, using that as a platform to come back into China because uh, what we see in China is, is not a lot different from what we see in Australia. If you're running an Australian business, best to have an Australian run it. If you're running a Chinese business, best to have a Chinese running it. So uh, it's just simple that uh, maybe you'd look at that opportunity to work with, an, uh, with a Chinese in Australia first, get your act together, and then and use that as a springboard to come into China. There's still plenty of opportunity here. It may not be in the big cities, Beijing, Shanghai, Guangzhou, even in the second tier cities, Hangzhou, Ningbo, uh, Nanjing. It may be even further down into the 350 or 400 other cities of the size of Perth or Adelaide that exist here. You may have to go out in the bush you know, to one of these places or several of these places to make your money. You're best to go out there with some local expertise to help you get it done. What's a, a way that the Chinese companies can identify opportunities in Australia? How, how do they link in with Australian companies? Is, is it through uh, companies such as yours or through chambers? Uh, certainly companies such as ours, uh, through the chambers, um, through the various uh, Australia-China business uh, chambers and organisations in Australia. Australia has a very big you know, private equity um, sector. Those uh, private equity um, advisors and consultants all have projects to hand. Um, so, you know, it's, it's, there, there are sort of multiple channels. The internet, there, there are multiple channels for the Chinese to use. I make the point again, the China market is a very large market, but it's still an emerging market. It's a tough market to make money in. There's no easy ride. It's a global market. You're not only competing against Chinese competitors, you're, teaching, you're competing against Germans and Italians and Americans and Thais. And, I mean, every man, every, it's, you know, it's a very competitive, um, low margin market in most cases, but with enormous potential. But, you know, it's, it's tough and uh, you need to learn a lot before you'll be successful here and you generally will find that uh, having you know Chinese manage your business is one of the success factors. So if you can do a deal with someone in Australia and, and then leapfrog uh, or sort of, you know, platform off that to de-risk your entry into China, I think that's a very good strategy. Another story that we're hearing a lot about is that the activity in China is spreading may, way beyond the you know, traditional centres of activity and we're talking about the West and the the hinterland, there's a lot happening there. Yes, very much so. Um, you know, around the big cities now, the opportunity has been largely combed over. It's quite difficult to get in unless you do it by M&A, you know, type activity. If you're wanting to do greenfields work, you really need to get out into the mm -hmm. second and sometimes third tier cities. But I mean, the good thing about China is there's, there's 400 or 450 of those cities out there, so <laughs> there's still plenty of scope, you know. <laughs> That's the good thing about the market. It's a, it's a very, very deep market in that sense. Well, I think that's a very optimistic note to finish on. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, Alan very much for his thoughts uh, on what's happening in China and, and to you know, give a lot of hope to those small Australian companies that are wanting to get into the market here uh, and also for Chinese businesses who are interested in diversifying into the Australian market. Thanks very much, Alan. Thank you very much, Michael.